Hello folks, this is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Siloam Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast and it's good to be here today and uh, we're going to be continuing on a kind of a mini-series that I started kind of back a couple months ago. It's called Jonah's Revival and just really quickly for those of you, it's been a while since I've sort of touched on it um back I, I started this series it was about a couple months back um i was invited to a i was actually invited to speak at a church and uh when i got back i wanted to, to kind of continue on talking about revival and so we're gonna we started a series um, a mini series is called Jonah's Revival, and so we're going to be continuing on that series. And this is going to be Jonah's Revival Part Two, and Part Two we're going to be dealing with only Chapter Two. It's going to be a four-part series. We're just going to go through the whole book of Jonah. Amen. And uh, sister, it's good to see you. God bless you. And. Um, I, I appreciate you, appreciate your friendship. It's good to see you. It's good to have you tune in today. And uh, so anyways, we're going to be talking about Jonah. Uh, this is going to be part two of Jonah. This is going to be Jonah's Revival part two. And um, let me tell you something. God's people believe in giants, dragons, unicorns, and talking donkeys. And I don't mean Democrats. That was a joke, right? You know, Democrats are donkeys. God's people believe in giants, dragons, unicorns, and talking donkeys. No? Okay, it's all right. I told Pastor Mike that, and he got a kick out of that. <laughs> um, but anyways, so he got a kick out of that. So, uh, But anyways, that's that's another thing for another time. Uh, but anyways, but God, but that's true though. God's people believe in giants, dragons, unicorns, and they also believe in talking donkeys. And I don't mean Democrats. <laughs> Balaam's donkey, the she donkey. God opened the mouth of the she donkey. That's that's what God did. And by the way, the Democrats need to keep their mouth shut. Amen. But anyways. Uh, Sister Sherry, it's good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, Jonah's Revival. This is going to be part two of that series that I started about a couple months back. So I'm just going to kind of dive right into it. Um, but does, before we begin, does, do you guys, does anybody have any prayer requests or praises they'd like to share? Um, and um, if you have any prayers or praises, you can feel free to write jot that down. If not, that's okay. You can just message me privately and let me know, and I'll pray for you. Amen. Um, I do have a prayer request for myself. Um, thinking, I have a desire to. I have a desire, and uh, I do have a desire to eventually um, start a church, plant a church down here in Arkansas. And I don't know when that's going to be. God sort of put it on my heart a couple years back to kind of get things prepared for that. And so I'm not even sure exactly what's going to happen there. So just pray for me on that. If you can pray that God will just have his way and will. Um, I, I appreciate that. You keep me in prayer. Uh, please keep my ministry in prayer. Um, I haven't been doing as much videos as I'd like to. I've just been very crazy busy with work and and um, actually, I do have an announcement, by the way, uh, just a second. But, you know, um, so I've been just crazy busy and stuff like that. So you pray for me on that. Um, but anyways, uh, with that, um, I may be doing more videos a little bit more frequently. Uh, now, uh, soon here, I'm going to be, I have a, I got two jobs and it's wearing me out. And I got to, I got to, I got to scale back. Um, so I'm actually going to be taking, I'm going to be, taking the job that gives me the, the that gives me the full time and I'm going to cut out the job that's like part time. I'm going to be doing that because you know working about 60 hours a week is it gets exhausting, it gets tiring and it just you just get worn out and stuff like that and I don't get an opportunity to do what God's called me to do on here. Amen. So 
I'm going to be eventually leaving one of my jobs. So one of the jobs, I will have the other job that gives me about 40 hours a week. Uh, but with that, that will enable me to do my videos. That will enable me to, to do my ministry, to do the ministry that God's called me to. Uh, so pray for me on that. Um, uh, Sister Sherry, if you're, if you're still on, um, I just want to let you, I want to let you all know, not just Sister Sherry, but just let all you guys know, um, I'm kind of revamping my ministry a little bit. And so there's not going to be any more PBL. Uh, I'm getting rid of that. And instead, I'm taking PBL and Fishers of Men, I'm going to combine them into one broadcast. So you're only going to get one broadcast for me, but I might broadcast like three, four times a week. We'll see whatever the Lord kind of prepares, but I'm sort of revamping it a little bit to make it less confusing, to make things simple. And so I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make things complicated. Amen. So let's, I want to try to keep it simple. I don't want confusion amongst anybody. So it's just, I'm going to be only having one broadcast and it's going to be under the Fishers of Men broadcast. So we're just going to just kind of do some change. I, I just kind of felt led to do some changes and stuff like that. So pray for me that God will just have his way and his will. I don't want any, I don't want to do anything that's outside his will. So you pray for me on that, okay? Um anyways, uh let's see here. We do have a fellow sister that wants prayer for her and her mother. Her mother's not doing well, but please pray for her and her mother. Um please pray for a brother a fellow brother uh for his family and his ex-wife. And uh Let's see here. What else do we have? Um, let's see here. Hey, Brother Bill. Good to see you, buddy. Praise God. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to be talking about Jonah tonight. So hopefully you can, uh, hopefully you'll be able to stay for it. For it. And if not, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link to the video so that you might be able to watch it when you do have free time. But thank you for tuning in. Um, uh, let's see. What else? Uh Brother Joey doesn't mind me mentioning his name, uh, so pray for Brother Joey. Um, Brother Joey, he's got pain, so you know he he has he has his pain, so pray for him. Oh, by the way, I, I, I want to say this uh, for those of you, uh, uh, please pray for Bethel Church. Bethel Church needs your prayers. Um, I'm telling you what, it seems like Satan is really attacking churches. And it's heartbreaking to hear stuff that, you know, it's just heartbreaking. So pray for Bethel Church. Um, amen. Uh, let's see here. Please pray for, let's see, who else? Does anybody have any prayer requests or anything like that that they would like to share? Um, let's see here. Um, all you guys at uh, uh, Church of Many Blessings, I'll be praying for you. Brother Chad, it's good to see you. I'll be praying for you. I, Brother Chad, I thought you were going to preach tonight. I didn't know that you you were, you head off tonight. So, but that's okay. But I, I enjoy you, Brother Chad. Uh, yes, Satan is on a rampage. That's right. Satan is going amok. And I got to tell you something. That that devil needs to be bound. That devil's going to get bound up one of these days. Um, but I'll be praying for you, Brother Chad, and Brother Ron, and Church of Many Blessings. I'll be praying for. Uh, Brother Bill, I'll pray for you and your church. I'll I'll be praying for Bethel. I'll be praying for uh, uh, Pastor Cooley and his church. Um, yeah, uh, let okay. We um, I, I got I got to mention this too. Okay, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, but uh, the there is a fellow sister that kind of got uh, uh, just just viciously attacked on. Facebook and it's not right, you know, just beat up and saying all kinds of false things. So you keep her in prayer, okay? Um, yeah, I, I agree. It that that's that can be hurtful. So let we'll, we'll be sure to pray for you. Uh, I'll be keeping you in prayer. Um, we do have a fellow sister that wants to wants prayer for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So we can we we can pray for that. Um, and also, another sister wants us to pray for her baby grandson. I know that's probably a, a link. That's that was a prayer request that was a while back, but it doesn't it does it doesn't uh, hurt to pray for for the for for this particular baby grandson. Amen. And you know, pray that that the Lord will get a hold of him at an age of, at an age. 
uh, where he can understand, you know? Anyways, uh, I'm sorry. I'm rambling on and on and on, and it's been a while since I did one of these, so just please bear with me. It's been a while, okay? Uh, let's see. What else? What else? I, I don't think... I think that's it, right? I think I don't have any more... Um, I was going to look on Drudge Report, and there's really nothing interesting on Drudge Report to report anything like that, so I'm not even going to bother looking. Okay, guys. You guys ready for the word? I'm ready to preach the word. Amen? We're going to be talking about Jonah Chapter 2. This is entitled Jonah's Revival Part 2. Now, just a little background because it's been a while since I actually preached the first part of this. Um, when we think of revival, okay, now I'm sure, all, yes, we need to pray for, we need to pray for our president. We need to pray for him. We need to pray for all of our leaders. And so, um, but we need revival in this nation. And I'm going to tell you something. Revival should begin at the house of God. Amen. Revival needs to begin at the house of God. Now, you might ask yourself, well, Brandon, why do you say that? Here's why I say that. Because the Bible says that judgment, judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if it begin with us, how much more to them that don't believe? Amen. So we need to have, we need to have revival in our churches first. And the thing is, we, we, we say we want revival. We say, you know, but the question I have is, what is God's people willing to do about it? Okay, what is God's people willing to do about it? Because I'm going to tell you something. God instructed Jonah to go preach a message to Nineveh. Okay, and Jonah rebelled. He was rebellious. Okay? Now, God got God got Jonah's attention. And so for that, God had God chastised Jonah. And how did he do it? By a whale, by a fish, a really big fish. Amen. God chastised Jonah with a big by a with a big fish. And by the way, um we need to be careful at how we think how God how God should chasten us. Because sometimes God will chasten us in ways that we, we may not know how he'll we don't know how he's gonna chasten us. God used a fish to chastise Jonah for his disobedience. And you want to know something? Jonah repented for his sin, and God redirected Jonah to get back to get back on track to go to Nineveh. Amen. And so the reason why I'm talking about revival is because revival needs to begin with us. And and the reason and the reason for it is before we can have a, a revival in this nation, we need to repent of our sin first. Amen. Now, I want you guys to put a uh, put a marker or something or or just kind of Save your spot in Jonah chapter 2. Okay, turn with me to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Um, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Or is it 1 Chronicles? I can't remember. I think it's... You know what? I wonder if it's... Hang on a second. 2 Chronicles 7... Yeah, it's 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now that verse is not talking about not it's not talking about unbelievers, it's not talking about atheists. This verse is directed at God's people. Because if you think about it, if you really think about it, the sins of this nation, we're somewhat guilty of that. If, now, now, I know you're not going to like that very well. But, but here's the thing. Let me explain what I mean by that. Okay? 
um, our tax dollars, our tax dollars, right? Our tax dollars was going towards Planned Parenthood. They were funding Planned Parenthood with our tax dollars, with our taxes, the taxes that we were paying out of our pockets. That was going, that part of it was going to fund Planned Parenthood. Now, I know a lot of people are not going to like that very well, but let me tell you something. I know you, you cannot control where your tax dollars go to. That's on them. But we still need to repent of our sin, but we also need to repent of the nation's sins. Amen? That's what Daniel did. That's what Daniel did, didn't he? Daniel repented of his sin as well as the sin of his people. And, I, and I'm going to tell you something. I think that that's what we need to do. We need to repent, not just for our sins, but the sins of the people in our nation. Amen? We need to repent. And that's a big thing. That's a very big thing. Now... So, what we see here, now I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit so we can get a, a little bit of a refresher, okay? It says here in Jonah chapter 1, okay, towards the end of chapter 1, okay, it says that, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So what we see here is that Jonah disobeyed. He was rebellious. He, he was intentionally rebellious. Okay? It's, it's really interesting. You'll find, you, read, you read a little before that. He says uh, that he was one to fear God. And yet he was rebellious towards what God had, had told him. Now that doesn't mean... Now, the reason why I point that out is because he probably was saved. He was a man of God. He was a prophet. But he was subject to like passions, wasn't he? Let me tell you something. Did God still use did God still use Jonah even though he rebelled? Sure he did. God chastised Jonah, didn't he? And that's how he did it. God used a fish to chastise Jonah. And he repented. So I, I want to encourage you guys today. If you think that you're way too sinful, that God can't use you, that's not true. The Apostle Paul was a murderer. He, he went around persecuting the church. He consented at the death of Stephen. And guess what? God got a hold of Saul, and then he became Paul, and God used him in a mighty way. I want to encourage you guys, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what sin you're, no matter what sin you're, you're struggling with, God can still use you. Jonah was rebellious, and God still used Jonah, didn't he? Now, given the fact that Jonah didn't really have a great attitude, I don't have a great attitude, but, you know, God can still use you. Amen? No mat does, does, does that make sense with everybody? Okay, so... Let's start, in, let's start in chapter 2. Let's start in verse 1. It says this, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly, out of, the belly of hell cried I, and thou, hearkens, hearkenest, uh, or that, and thou heardest my voice. Let me tell you something. That we're starting we're starting to see that Jonah was what Jonah he start Jonah realized that he did wrong. So we're starting to see him repenting of his sin. And by the way, if you cry out to God, God can hear you. 
He can hear you. Amen. God can hear you. God can hear your prayers. If you cry out to him and repent, God will hear you. And God will forgive you of your sin if you repent. Now, it says here, For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the sea, and the floods uh, uh, compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the, thy holy temple. Isn't that interesting? He says, I will look again toward thy holy temple. Jonah was going to fix his eyes back on God again. Amen. That's what, that's what we should do. When we know that we have fallen short, when we have sinned, and we know we've done wrong, we need to repent of our sin. We need to get back up. We need to dust. We need to just dust the dust off of us and refocus our attention on Jesus Christ. Because I'm going to tell you something: the devil is going is going to wanting to distract you. He's going to try to get you to focus on you and try to tell you that you're not worthy. And that you can't do this and you can't do that because you're too sinful and the Satan is going to come at you. But you need to focus. We need to focus our attention on Jesus Christ. Amen. Focus on thy on his holy temple. A amen. The water um the waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depth closed me round about, the wheat. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth with her with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted with fainteth fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came into the, came in unto thee and thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Now, as we see in chapters 1 and 2, we see that God instructed Jonah to go to Nineveh, okay? Jonah disobeyed. And because of his disobedience, it brought a storm. And, and his sin could have cost every all, all, all the mariners, it could have cost them their lives. Jonah fessed up with what he did. Jonah said, throw me overboard, and once you do, the storm will calm. And that's what they did. And you want to know something? God prepared a fish to swallow Jonah. And that was going to be, that was God's way of chastising Jonah for his disobedience. And when he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, he cried out to God. He repented of his sin. He chose to fix his eyes upon the Lord and upon his holy temple. And you want to know something? God spake to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out. And therefore, God took that and redirected Jonah to where he needed to, where he needed to be. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. When you sin and when you fall in short, sometimes I think God will, use, God will give us our Jonah moment. And he'll allow something to happen to redirect you to where you need to go. Amen. God will do that so that he, so that you will be on the right path and not wrong. And I'm going to tell you something. When you sin, when you fall short, God will chasten you for your sins. But he's going to do that to because he's going to make you sorry for what you did. And I'm going to tell you something. After after the chastisement is done you'll you you you'll wish that you'll never have you'll never do it again 
you'll just you just won't you just won't ever do it again because you know what's gonna happen if you do it again. You're just gonna get more chastisement. Amen. So I know this was this was not lengthy. It it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't going to be a very lengthy message because it's not a very lengthy chapter. But next time, we're going to be getting into chapter 3. We're going to be getting into the revival of Nineveh. Okay? So, in conclusion, before we can have a revival in this nation, revival needs to begin with us means that we need to repent of our sin turn to God repent of our sin ask the Lord to forgive us and to cleanse us and we need to ask we need to ask, then when we repent of our sin he will heal our land he will forgive us of our sins and he will heal our land Amen. And when we and when we repent of our sin, when we repent of our sins, then we can be able to have revival in this nation. But before we do, the church needs to repent of their sin. Where there is no repentance, there is no revival. Where there is no repentance, there is no salvation. Repentance is a key part into having revival. It's a very essential part of having revival in this nation. If there is no repentance... Is a false revival. Amen. I want to encourage you. Let us look and examine ourselves. Whether we be in the faith or not. Because I'm going to tell you something. You can deceive yourself. And your heart can deceive you. Don't follow your heart. Follow the word of God. Follow what God has written in his word. Because if you follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you follow the word of God. You cannot go wrong. Amen. You cannot go wrong. You will always be on a safe path. If you follow the word of God. Amen. So next time we're going to be getting into the third part of this series. Uh, Jonah's Revival Part 3 and Jonah's Revival Part 3 is going to be dealing with the revival of Nineveh so whenever I get a chance to do another one of these uh, feel free to tune in um, I will be having I'll have something posted on Facebook and I'll be posting this on Sermon Audio as well as YouTube so if you if you've missed it now uh, you can always feel free to catch up later Amen now, uh, with that said, um, listen, I don't want you taking my word for things. I'd rather you not believe, I'd rather you not take everything I say for truth. As a matter of fact, I want you to take what I say and you match it with this book. Amen? You, match, you, you compare it to this book. If what I say does not match with this book, then let God be true and every man a liar. And if I'm wrong, one of these days I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account as to what I said. Every idle word I've said, I'm going to have to give an account for. Okay? But if I am right, then I pray and ask that the Lord will show you what I'm talking to you about. Really quickly, if you guys don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know for sure... You can know for sure today that if you if if you were to die, you can know for sure that you can that heaven will be your home. And it's very easy. 
Whosoever shall, con whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and that God raised him from the dead on the third day, you'll be saved. And it's very simple. All you have to do is go before the Lord Jesus Christ, admit that you are a sinner, repent of your sins, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, ask him to wash you and to cleanse you, ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your heart and life, ask him to come, ask him to live inside your heart, ask him to fill you with his spirit. And when you sincerely go before the Lord and repent of your sins and ask the Lord to come into your heart and life, you'll be saved. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me give you some good news. If you are truly saved, God seals you, God seals you with his spirit. And he that hath performed, he that begun a good work in you will perform it to the day at the, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Once you are a son, you are a son. If saved, always saved. Amen. If you are truly saved and you're truly born again, you're sealed. You're saved. You're, you, heaven is your home. Amen. I just want to encourage you with that. Um, I want to. I appreciate you guys all tuning in tonight. Uh, love you guys. I, I love. I love you all. God bless you. Um, I just want to play just a couple, just a couple verses of, of Amazing Grace, and after that we'll close. Amen. We'll go ahead and play Amazing Grace. <laughs> Good to see everybody on tonight. God bless you. You pray for me. Pray for my videos. Pray for the ministry. Pray that God will just take and do with it as He wills. Um, I just want to just I just want to let you all know. Um, you know my ministry. You know if you guys want to tune in, that's great. If not, that's fine too. Um, I just want to let you all know that if you know um. I'm 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 here just I'm just here to preach the gospel and do whatever the Lord tells me. Amen. So if you all want to tune in, you know, great. If not, that's fine too. Um, you know, and if you can't tune in right away, that's fine too. You know, whatever works, whatever the Lord lays in your heart. Um I'm going to tell you something. God God is I don't want to build a ministry. Okay? I don't want to build this ministry. I rather have God do it. Amen. And when God when God's in it, God will do some pretty amazing things, amen? So, you know, I just want to just let God build it and do whatever he wants with it, because it's his, amen? It's not mine, it's his. Um, anyways, I love you guys. God bless you. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, Till next time, this, this is Brother Brandon. I'm signing off for the evening. God bless you. I love you. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. God bless you guys. See ya. Bye.